Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you all having a good ch chat there, isn't it? I always think church is about fellowship as well as, as, well as um, coming and meeting for God this morning. But today we're going to um, worship God. We're going to believe that God wants to meet with us. Anyone else believe that? Fantastic. If you don't, well, hopefully he is going to meet with you today and that will change your expectations. But I'm going to invite Shirley up to open in prayer for us this morning. Thank you, Shirley. And as she comes up, just want to read for us this. It's Psalm 115, verse 1. Psalm 115, verse 1. It says, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be glory because of your love and faithfulness. You now, today's not about us. I'm sure you guys know that already. It's about praising God. It's about worshiping God because he's worthy of our praise today. He is worthy of our honor. He is worthy of us celebrating him because of his love and faithfulness. Because of the fact that whatever we've done, there's forgiveness through the cross. Amen. There's always a second chance. Yeah. However much we might have messed up, we feel bad about ourselves, God still loves us. Amen. And it's a chance for us just to come before him and say, God, you know, if this week I have messed up, I'm sorry. And thank you for your second chance. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Through the prayer time this weekend, I've just had this scripture. And it's the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. Father God, as we come before you this morning, as we bring our praise, I just pray for your Holy Spirit to just move upon us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Shall we stand together as we worship God? Be high and lift it up. Be high and lift it up. Be high and lift it up. Jesus, it's you we glorify, it's you we're lifting high, your name be glorified. Be high, lift it up, be high and lift it up, be high and lift it up, be high and lift it up. Jesus, it's you we glorify, it's you we're lifting high. Your name be glorified. Jesus, it's you we glorify. It's 
Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. And say it one more time, that verse from Psalm 115. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Oh, Jesus. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You're worthy of it all. Day and night, night and day, let it sense the rise. Day and night, night and day, let it sense the rise. Day 
to us Lord but to your name be the glory because of your love and your faithfulness amen amen take your seats guys for a moment you know God's worthy of our honor and our glory and we've got a couple of testimonies today just of what God has been doing in people's lives so I'm first thing I'm gonna invite a Pat wherever you are Pat somewhere there we go um this weekend we've been praying we've had our 48 hours of prayer and Pat had an encounter with Jesus on Friday night so i let Pat share. Cheers, Pat. Off you go. Um, yes. Um, for a, at least a year, um, give or take, I've had a real chronic problem with my right knee. Uh, I went off my knee originally, and I couldn't mobilise very well or, at all, really, for a long time. And then it just got to a point where it seemed as if it was better, and it was something, one of those pains where you just learn to live with it, and you just get used to it. Um, it was difficult for me to kneel down, um, difficult for me um, to, to go up steps even, um, you know, with, without hanging on to something. And all this last week, I've had a really, really bad back and going round to my side. And um, I, I did come to the prayer meeting on Friday. Um, but Pastor Praveen kindly picked me up because, I mean, a lot of the time, when I, apart from when I'm working on a Sunday, I don't get to church because, um, you know, sometimes it's really, really been really, really painful to walk. So, um, so anyway, he picked me up on Friday and during the, the, the meeting, Pastor Jim preached to, uh, about Caleb having a different spirit from the other um, spies that, that um, went to spy at the land. Um, and then he, he, said, he sort of asked for us all to come forward and surrender, if we wanted to, to surrender our lives to Jesus once again. And, and he said, and I, I was up for that, I was right up for that. But then he said those words, kneel at the front. And I, straight away I said, I can't kneel. But then I thought to myself, I'm talking myself out of this. I really want to surrender. And I thought, yes, I can kneel. I says, I, I, I'm Caleb, I've got a different spirit in me. And I came forward and I knelt down. And I, as I knelt down, I had no pain in kneeling. While I was kneeling down, I was not uncomfortable. I did not have to shift my position or change the way my feet were. And even better, I was able to get up without huffing and puffing and holding on for dear life to something, you know. So God really has healed me and I have no pain in my knee whatsoever now. And my back, apart from a little ache, is, is healed. Yes. So yes, the Lord's been really good to me. Thank you. Isn't God good? I love it. I'm now going to invite up Rhea. Rhea's going to come and share. Rhea's been part of the Cornerstone family for three years now. I'm coming along to the four o'clock fellowship. And um, she's heading off today. We're really sad after today. Is that an R? Ah. There we go. It's good. And it really, I mean, especially in the four o'clock fellowship, she's going to be so missed. But some of you have heard her testimony, but many of you haven't. And I thought, we've got to get her to share today. So I was like, Rhea, come, come and share. So I'll let, um, hand over to you. 
Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, actually, I came to faith at the age of 19. I'm only 21 now. And um, I didn't know who Christ is. I don't know what he's done or anything. But when I came to university for my first year, I had nothing and no one. And I literally needed somebody. And I knew that Christ is all I can get. And God came into my life. And I realized that um, I need to just know who he is. I need to get to have that personal relationship with my personal savior. So I did surrender myself. I gave my life to him. And um, I was not like born again, actually, but like I, I'm just in the process of wanting to learn more about him. Um, I was always told like in church services, you know, you have to have faith that Jesus can heal you or he can deliver you. And I was going through severe eczema on both my arms severely. I'm sure you all know what eczema is, that really dry, itchy skin um, issue. So I had really bad eczema for like since I was a child till I was 19. And I just sat in the one day in the one night, sorry, I woke up and I said to the Lord, if you're a living God still, and you can still heal me now, even though I'm not completely properly knowing who Christ is, I still had that faith he can do it. So I just kept saying like, Lord, please, can you heal me? And then I opened the Bible. I started reading a passage from there, expecting a miracle happen, but nothing happened. So I had to carry on <laughs> praying. And I was like, Lord, no, you have to help me tonight. I want to be free from it tonight. So I have uh, like few creams that is especially for my eczema. And I put both of the creams in front of me. But I said, Lord, more than the medicine that's in front of me, I know that you're my healer and the medicine is from the word of God that I carry so you have to touch me and heal me and I had that confidence that tonight I'm going to get healed and it's about one o'clock in the morning and I um, listened to a healing uh, service online and I just joined the service and I was just listening to it and they were about, it was about two hours the service and as the entire service went by they were praying for people that had cancer, trauma, like any type of issues or problems in their life but I was like why is this uh, evangelist not talking about skin? So I was like about to stop the, um, the service but then I thought no let's just carry on for another half an hour and the moment I carried on for half an hour he said anybody that has a skin issue I pray for you so I'm sitting in my room listening to this and this is a service happening in America and um, by like the moment I heard skin like healing I just started crying out to God and I just literally about half an hour weeping my eyes and saying Lord I know you can touch me and heal me and the itchiness on both my arms stopped just there itself and I slept that night around three o'clock in the morning I woke up the next morning because I got university and I'm about to do oh I kind of forgot that I did this prayer but I just went with the normal routine of my like university thing and then as I'm about to apply the cream to my skin, I look at it and it's completely gone. And from that day to this day, I've never had it again. So anyone that's in this room that has any pain, just like we heard from Sister Pat, that healing that happened on Friday evening was such a miracle. But we know that he's a healer and he's still alive to this day. We just have to trust in him. And just as his word says, faith as the size of a mustard seed is all you need. And that he will do it for you if you just trust in him. God bless you. Amen. Isn't that great? Don't get too far, Maria. Don't, Maria, don't get too far. Yeah. As she's heading off, um, we, we pray and she's coming back as well. <laughs> Hang on, we just want to pray for her, send her away with God's blessing. So Jane, can I invite you up to come and pray for Rhea? Thank you. <laughs> Let's stretch our hands out towards what her. What an absolute pleasure to be asked, a privilege to be asked to pray for this lovely young woman. I've not known her very long, but I know that she's absolutely in love with Jesus, and she absolutely loves him, she absolutely believes him. And I just pray that, you, that what you've got inside you, you will take that with you, and you will shine for Jesus wherever you go. Just be yourself, Leah. Just be yourself. But take Jesus with you, because you have what people out there need. And I just pray such a blessing on you, my lovely. I just pray such a blessing from Jesus that he'll just be absolutely overwhelmed with what he's going to do in your life. But as you surrender to him, which I know you have, and I know that he's already answered all the prayers, 
that other things and he's completely transformed you and as you keep on trusting I believe he'll continue to transform you and heal you in those areas that, that nobody knows about but Jesus and you that nobody else can get to nobody else can touch those places but Jesus can he can heal you and he will heal you my sweet completely and fully and I just pray that you will take you and Jesus carry and I pray that you will take Jesus everywhere with you you're not ashamed of him you're not embarrassed you absolutely adore him and I just pray that that you just just continue to take him with you and to just watch what he'll do in your life because you know, he's going to do extraordinary things in your life and I pray this in the name of Jesus And the final thing we're going to pray for, so we're going to pray for some all together in a moment. But next week with the young people, and Naomi sort of got me to do it as well. Okay, we're going away camping. Right, last time I took a youth group camping, I think Maria might have been there with St. Peter's as well. We had torrential flooding and the Red Cross brought in spare blankets and everything else. And I woke up at three o'clock in the morning with teenage boys crying. I'm not going to put you off, Nathaniel and Daniel, sorry. Okay. <laughs> And I remember giving up without a sleeping bag, going, oh, my goodness. So we're going to pray. But I just want us to pray um, for the guys. So I'm going to invite those who, those who are going camping. Can you come to the front? Is that OK? OK, so that's not, yeah, you are come to the front. Come on then, guys. Those who are going camping next week, come on to the front. Yeah. Pull them up. Come on, Emmanuel. Dumpy, come. Nathaniel, Daniel, Precious, Shannon, Tyrese. Do you know the amazing thing I'm most proud of this time? Anyone else? You see anyone else? Sasha's coming up. The thing I'm most proud of, in total, throughout the week, there's going to be about 30 of us across the congregations who would have, who would have gone, gone there. Um, but always, it always used to be, how many people can we take camping? This time I'm boasting. So Jane, you can come up as well, because you're volunteering. They're always short, they're always short of volunteers. I know. And there's, um, so we've got so Naomi, myself, Steve and Rachel. We're going to be leading these young guys. Pray for us, okay, for sleep and Red Bull. Okay. <laughs> uh, we've looked at the schedule, and Rachel, I think it's Rachel said we need Red Bull for breakfast every day with our cereal. Um, but a lot of these young guys, they're going to be um, volunteering and actually serving on site, and they're going to be working. And I'm most proud of the fact we've got about eight or nine people going along to Elam's Big Youth Festival, and not just taking, but giving as well. Isn't that incredible? Give them a big clap, because I think it's amazing on set. So we're going to pray. <laughs> And we want to pray that we just encounter God next week. I don't want it just to be a, I want it to be a fun time. But actually, I want it to be a fun time where we encounter God. I'm praying against every, any lightning storms that can come my way. <laughs> okay, anything else? But Maria, can I get you to pray? Is that right? Can I get you to pray for these young guys as we go away? Everyone is there. I'm actually still reeling from the other week when these guys spoke in church because their answers were phenomenal. I've, I, everybody I've spoken to, I've talked about that. So I, I'm really chuffed and I'm really proud of all of you. And I'm sure you're going to have a wonderful time. I'm sure the sun's going to come out at some point. <laughs> so. So, Lord, as these young people go off to camp, we pray that you will be a blessing to them and they will be a blessing to those around them. Lord, we, we desperately need young people that are standing out for you, Lord, that aren't ashamed and aren't embarrassed to talk about the things of the Lord to their friends. And Lord, as, the, as they grow in faith and as they grow in courage and as they grow in strength, Lord, we pray that you'll be with them every step of the way. We pray that whilst we're at camp, you'll not only bless the young people, but the leaders too, Lord, to give them a fresh inspiration and a fresh drive, Lord, because it's not, it's, it's not always easy working with young people and it's not always easy to say the right things and do the right things and be the person they need you to be at that time. So, Lord, we pray for all of, all of them collectively and collaboratively, Lord, as, as they worship you, that they will bring something fresh back to our, to our church, Lord, and that their anointing will spread out throughout the congregation, Lord, and we pray that you will bless each and every one of them and we pray for the weather, Lord. Let's like, say so that there's a little bit of sunshine, Lord. It can be a little disheartening when it's it's raining constantly. But Lord, let's rain on them with with glory and with with your peace and with your blessings. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Brilliant. So we're going we're gonna to stand in a moment. Um, and as we do, I just want to encourage us. We've heard some great testimonies of what God can do. And I believe God will, can impact our lives today. And for Pat, it was quite a while, wasn't it, Pat? Were you praying for your knee? Have you asked us to pray? And then suddenly God does it. And it's not always instantaneous healing. Sometimes healing takes time. And for Rhea, it was overnight in a bedroom watching if God does it through TV, isn't it? Or through computers, it's incredible. And God can work. But I want to give us an opportunity now just to pray. So can we stand together? And maybe just look around you. Just grab a couple of people around you. Um, and just run and just pray, God. Say, God, just pray over them right now and say, God, if there's any healing they need in their body right now, Jesus, will you bring healing? I know there's some people here who would never share publicly what they need. So I just want to encourage you just to reach out around you, people in front of you, behind you, um, touch them appropriately, okay, if they're comfortable with it. If they knock you off, don't pressure it. But let's just pray and say, God, can you just pray right now for those who need to touch for you right now?
I've got just one move With my arms stretched wide I will worship you So I throw up my hands To praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah hallelujah come on my soul so come on my soul now don't you get shy on me lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs And get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul, come on my soul Now don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs And get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Oh, come on, my soul, now don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs, and get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul, oh, come on, my soul, now don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord So I throw up my hands To praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a Father God, as we really pray for our young people, what you're doing in their lives, we thank you, Lord, for the testimonies of healing, Lord, the testimonies of restoration that you're doing in people's lives. And Father God, I pray as we come around your word now that you continue to move in our lives, Lord, that you continue to speak to us. We pray that in your precious name. Amen. 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 Please take your seats. She's a good girl, isn't she, Naomi? <laughs> it's good. Bro. A couple of just very quick, um, quick announcements. I think one really. Um, we th I think the Brighton trip is, new Brighton trip is fully booked. However, um, Michelle's here next Sunday when I'm away with the youth. So there might be some spaces available. So if you want to go to New Brighton beach trip, a day down the promenade there, praying for good weather again on the 19th of August, then um, have, what to call it, have a chat with Michelle next week, uh, next Sunday, and you'll be able to find out more about if it's on. Right, let's pull this up here, Resilient Hope. I'm going to share today um, about Resilient Hope, and again, same as we're always doing, 
Um, so I'm doing my speaking now. We've got some notes available afterwards. If this speaks to you, you want encouragement to follow it up, you can get the notes online at elim.family forward slash Sunday notes, or there's some printed out at the front for those of you who um, are not very technologically advanced. But it's just a way for us to keep in heart, trying to grow as disciples. Because as I said, often for myself in my life, um, I shared this the other day, I know less now than I knew when I was 21 years old. I, as I grow as a Christian, I know less and less. And I, I've probably heard a lot of sermons, like some of you sitting there going, I've been in church since like I was a dot and now I'm 95 years old. I've listened to that many sermons. And sometimes we forget the stuff. And actually for me, the words that we share, the Bible passages that we look at, we want it just to make a difference in our lives and to grow to be more like Christ. That's why we make these available. So today the question I want to look at is how can we maintain resilient hope in our lives? Now, I'm in a situation in my life where my oldest daughter is about to go to high school. Now, you've got to know a little bit about me to know this, that when we go away from our kids, my wife is like, yes, the kids have gone away. And I'm like, are you sure your parents can look after them? Okay. Okay. I'm one of those who's always the sort of one who's more like, I'm not more maternal, probably not the word, more paternal. Don't go for it there. Very, very sort of always don't, don't like to be separated. And I don't like my kids getting older. And I've sort of said to them, I've tried putting bricks on their heads, but it hasn't helped. They're still growing up. And I've still got the stage now when I come out of, you know, coming to church in the morning and I'm sitting there going, I've got a preteen. And if anyone give me advice of what to do with a preteen, please tell me. Because um, everything I seem to do seems to go wrong. But she's heading up to high school and I'm a little bit in denial about the fact that she's heading up to high school. I know there's boys at high school and I know I was a high school boy once as well. And um, <laughs> a little bit of it is different. She going from this little community to a larger community, and oh, yeah, it'll be okay. Pray for me for the next six weeks. Um, but I run past her new school um, every couple of days, actually. And the other day, I was running past it, but I was on a different side of the road to where I normally am. And I saw the sign for the school. And the school had these the signs through it, things they wanted it to be in the school. And they wanted resilience, responsibility, and respect. I'm like, good luck. Okay. But the word that jumped out to me is this, was resilience. And I couldn't not notice resilience. And as I was running, I just thought, wow, that's kind of what I want in my daughter. I want my daughter to have resilience. I want my kids, one thing Naomi is a teacher, she keeps saying to us, she went, she goes, she goes, Jim, if there's nothing else that our kids need, it's resilience to keep going in the classrooms. So many children don't have resilience. They give up. And as I was thinking about this word, what does resilience actually mean? And the word resilience means this, the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties, it's toughness. The capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties, otherwise known as toughness. And you know, we remember as children, our parents would re re drill resilience into us. My mother was really big on us being resilient. I'll keep going, keep going, keep going. If ever I wanted to quit anything, she would never let me quit unless I went and spoke to the person I need to quit for. Have you ever had to do that? Some of you know what it's like when you have to cancel your gym membership. Okay, you end up taking out another five-year subscription. Okay, because it's terrifying. And I remember at a young age, I wanted to drop out of the Oliver musical. I'm like, mom, what have you signed me up for? She went, I wanted you to be on stage. I hate musicals, okay, even to this day. And um, so she said, if you want to finish, you've got to go and tell that person you're finishing. And it was always instill me to keep going when I wanted to give up. You know, in school, there was many times I've shared before, I wanted to give up. And my mom said, you don't you dare give up. You keep going. I'm like, mom, but I'm dyslexic. She goes, I don't care. You keep going. And these are really, really important. And you know, for me and Naomi, we're probably quite similar to this with our children. Pray for them, please. Um, we won't let them give up. We want to keep pushing them through because we know that resilience is key. If you've got, not got resilience, you'll never reach your potential. And I'm not talking about, I want, don't necessarily want my kids to be astronauts or prime ministers. I just want them to reach their potential. And the only way it's going to happen is by pushing through even when it gets hard. 
So my oldest daughter at the moment, she does street dance. And she doesn't mind street dance, but she's not overly keen on it. And I said to her, I said, if you want to quit street dance, you can quit it, it's fine. She goes, Dad, if I quit street dance, do you want to get me running or doing some other exercise? This is the lesser of few evils. <laughs> so she keeps going, but actually, you know what? The more she's kept going, she started to love it a bit more. And when I see her now, when she's doing dancing on stage in concerts, I look at her and go, that is not the same child that I sent to street dance classes. What's happened to her? And what happened was, she put resilience into place. And when she put resilience into place and kept going, even when she wanted to quit, do you know what's happened? She's flourishing so much more. And we need that resilience. And I want to explore this idea today of having a resilient hope in our lives. And I'm going to... Um, look at the book of Hosea. So if you want to find the book of Hosea, I might give you five minutes to find it. Okay, hidden away there. But there's a myth in Christianity. And that myth is this. God wants me happy. Because I don't think actually happiness is such a vague, fluffy term. Some of you are going, what are you saying, pastor? But it's kind of true. If you can find me a solid Bible translation that says God wants you to be happy. Could you share it to me afterwards? I'll give you a tenner. Okay, is that all right? I'm that confident about it. Because actually, it doesn't. It doesn't say this. The men and women who achieved more in the Bible for God, they didn't have it easy. They had it tough. Anyone who's achieved something has never had it easy. Those who have it easy, it doesn't quite work out. But the thing that these men and women have in the Bible is that they have a resilient hope in God. Amen. That God is going to work and they keep going and going and going all through the struggles. And there's this guy called Hosea. And Hosea is a brilliant guy. Actually, I kind of feel sorry for him. He's one of these chaps where if someone gave me, said God spoke to me the same way God spoke to him, I would get them checked out mentally. Okay, number one. And I'd be saying, does God really say that to you? But he was a guy who surrendered everything to God, had a resilient hope in God, even when it cost him everything. And this is, he lived about 760 BC, so to 720 BC. He was a prophet in northern Israel. So if they, Miranda, for those of you who know it, Israel was one country. Then after Solomon, his son Rehoboam was a not a very good guy. So the country split and divided. So you had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And he was based in the northern kingdom. And the northern kingdom was a pretty messed up time. He was there during a king called King Jeroboam II. And why does this matter to us who was king at the time? It matters because King Jeroboam was politically and economically a really, really successful king. He, the country was doing well on the surface of things, politically and economically they were doing really well. But as a leader, as a spiritual leader, and the country temperature at that time was, it was summed up like this. He, was spirit, he did spiritual detestable things. The temple, they didn't have their temple because that was based in Jerusalem. But they would worship wherever they wanted to worship. They would kill children. They would do all sorts of things in the name of religion. It was terrible. I know we complain about the UK, but I've not yet seen Rishi Sunak go and murder his children. Okay, into another God. That's what was going on. And we can probably feel a little bit like this, actually, in the UK, where I know we complain about the cost of living crisis, but really we're quite a prosperous country. You go out to Chad or to Central African Republic and you'll see what poverty is like. We're actually blessed, but we might be blessed economically here, but spiritually we're bankrupt at the moment. And this guy, he sort of understands a little bit of the context that we're in. And here he is, this guy, this prophet of God. And God asked him to do something. So for the purists of you, for Bible translation, you can read this in Hosea chapter 1. I'm using a paraphrased version, okay, just to sum up very quickly, Hosea chapter 1. And this is how I'd phrase it. This is how it's phrased. When God starts to use Hosea the prophet, first thing he says is, go find a prostitute, marry her. 
Why? Because Israel is a prostitute, guilty as charged, walking out on our relationships and having lured affairs with other gods. So Hosea goes and marries Gomer the prostitute and has children with her. That sums up Hosea chapter one. Do anyone want to be a follow Hosea's ministry here? I'm looking at going, really? It doesn't stop there. Because he has three children. And some of you, cry, you thought your parents gave you bad names. My dad wanted to call me Ebenezer. Okay. <laughs> if you're called Ebenezer, I apologize if I've just offended you. Okay. The first child was called Jezreel. And there's a lot of ideas about what Jezreel means. But God says, you must call him Jezreel. And it means it won't be long until I'm punished, till I punish. Imagine saying, come here, won't be long until you're punished. Come here, come on. You're living with your life. That name, will be cre- that's his name. Her name, I've got the wrong way around now. Okay, here we go. Second child, sorry, go back here, was called, I wish I could pronounce Hebrew stuff. Okay, lo Ramah, which means not loved. Because of the way that Israel was treating others and treating God. The third child was called Lo Ami, which means not my people. Hosea even called his kids these crazy names because God told him to, to live out what God had called him to because he had a message for the people of Israel. Now, I just want to clarify, I think Hosea loved his kids, okay? I don't think Hosea treated them badly, but these are the names as a prophetic testimony of what God was, was happening. But we don't know when, but this prostitute who is married looks like she ends up back in prostitution. And she ends up going and sleeping around. And I can imagine Hosea going, hang on, God. You told me to marry a prostitute and give her a second chance, okay? Effectively. But now she's back in the world, back selling herself. This wasn't part of the deal. This wasn't what I signed up for. Has anyone ever said to God, this is not what I signed up for? I've said it a few times. Okay, quite a few times. Because you can imagine this guy, he's married someone, he's given his heart to her, and she's gone and starts sleeping with other people. The rejection, the pain he would have felt is no different today as it would have been back then. The hurt, the shame he would feel. Now, we don't live in a shame culture here as much as other Middle Eastern cultures and Far East cultures do. But the shame of the fact that he was a man of God and his wife has gone back to prostitution. It wouldn't have been good. But Hosea does something really important. He doesn't give up. And he keeps following God. His life was becoming a living, breathing sermon of God's relationship with Israel. And he was fully committed to God. In chapter 2, we see God showing how what was happening in Hosea's life was a reflection of what was happening between God and Israel. And then chapter 3, this is what happens. Again, I'm going to summarize using adapted from the street Bible. God says to Hosea, go find your wife. Tell her you love her and you want her back. Yeah, I know she's having an affair with someone else and she's been unfaithful to her. But love her like I love the Israelites. Even though they go off with other gods and get um, get on the raisin cakes. That means they go to the sacrifice raisin cakes. For those of you who wonder what that means. At their sacrifices. Tell her, come let's get engaged again. Let's be an item. Go out on the town. Don't sleep with anyone else. I'll wait for you. Isn't that incredible faith by Hosea? I would have wanted to give up a long time ago. But he has this resilient hope in God that God is going to bring something good out of this. That God has called him for a reason to do this, and therefore he's going to do something. He has a resilient hope that even though he wants to give up, he doesn't give up. He knows that God's got a bigger plan. He understands that God wants to use him to convey a message to the people of Israel. And God, I want to encourage you today, wants to use you to convey a message to the people of Newcastle under Lyme and Stoke-on-Trent. Now, I'm not going to tell you today, this is not a prophetic word for some of you to go out and marry a prostitute, okay? But God wants to use your life as a book for other people to read. 
Because there's so many Christians, that no non-Christians out there, that the only Bible they're going to read is you. The only people they're going to read is you. And sometimes it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be lovely and roses and amazing. It's not. At times, life will get tough. And it's in those times that you need resilient hope in God, that God can work in your life and God's going to do something in your life and not give up. I've shared this before, but I wonder how many times people were so close to that miracle, were so close to that breakthrough in their lives, but they gave up just before they got there, just before the end. You know, I recently heard about a Christian comedian and it's talking about a middle-class American Christians. We're different in the West and in the UK, so I'm sure it doesn't apply to us. And he went to one house, and up on the wall, they had the poster, and it said this. It quoted 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 and 9. It says, we are hard-pressed on every side. We are crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Therefore, we will not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. Yet inwardly, we are being renewed. And he says, you see this in the kitchen, then you look around and there's this massive detached house. Okay, with a big kitchen. And the persecution that person's talking about is because Amazon have delivered the parcel late. (laughs) Not quite what Paul imagined when he was talking about that verse. Not quite what Hosea was talking about. Or the fact you get despair. Oh no, little Johnny didn't get into the grammar school. What's going on? And you're there going... Come on, I don't think that's what that persecution verse meant. You know, I know English Christians are a little bit different. But we need to persevere even when things don't go our way. Even when things go against, even when God asks us to carry something that's really, really tough. Jesus doesn't promise you an easy life. But he promises to help you carry what he's given you. I've met many people over the years who've given up on God and given up on church because things didn't go their way. Things didn't work out. God didn't do what they have expected. And if I'm honest with you, I've got major sympathy and empathy for them. Because situations people carry are sometimes harder than we can imagine. Some situations you guys are carrying are harder than anyone can imagine, and you haven't told many people. But sometimes we have to refocus ourselves to say, like Hosea, to say, you know, whatever happens, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to have resilient hope in God. I'm going to trust that God has a plan. I'm going to trust that God can work things out. You know, hope says that although God may call us for something tougher in our lives, it's for a purpose. You know, for Hosea serving God, And declaring this message was painful. It meant that his hopes and dreams would be sacrificed. I can imagine when Hosea was younger, he was thinking about this lovely, like, house next to his family. where he would meet this beautiful young lady, whisk her away, and they get married. And then God has a different plan for him. But he understood that following God sometimes requires sacrifice. You know, as Pentecostals, we love to live in the victory, but sometimes God also calls us to live in the sacrifice. We live in the victory, Jesus defeating death, but sometimes God calls us to take stuff on that we don't want to take on. You know, we live in a world that's similar to to Hosea's, where people have rejected God, where people worship what they want to worship, where the rich get richer and the poor are getting poorer. In the same way that God wanted Hosea to marry Gomer as a sign that Israel was cheating on him with other gods, God is calling us to be examples for him in our world. I want to tell you this. In the same way that God wanted Israel back, God wants Silverdale back. God wants Newcastle and the Lion back. God even wants Burslem and Tunstall back. God wants Margaret Drayton back. God wants Staffordshire back. God wants Shropshire back. He wants us to convey this message, to be an example to him, to reflect him in this world. But the reality is it's going to be tough. 
It's not going to be easy. If anyone thought it's going to be easy, then I don't know what planet you're living on. You know, when I came out of Bible college, I thought, oh, church life's a doddle. Yeah, all you do is preach the gospel, you get a big church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's sacrifices to be made along the way. Right. It's hard. The sad thing for Israel is this, is after Hosea shared these prophetic words, God, the people didn't come back to God. They ended up being captured by the Assyrians. And this is a challenge for us. Because sometimes God will call us to do something. God will call us to show resilient hope. And we won't see the answers to what God has called us to do. But we still have to trust him in doing the right thing. Right. And that's where resilient hope comes in. That even if things don't go the way that I want straight away, I need to keep going. I need to keep pushing. I just want to talk about three men um, who I think are a great example of, hopefully it's going to flick, here we go, of men who had more modern day men, not modern modern, but a couple, some of you might have been born when they're around. Okay. <laughs> so William Carey in the 1761 was born. And often he's referred to as the father of modern mission. So William Carey was an English Baptist who went to India. Now, if you look at his story, everything went wrong for him. Okay, this was a horrendous story. He faced numerous challenges. He felt faced cultural barriers and opposition throughout all of his missionary work in India. But despite not seeing much success in his lifetime, his passion for evangelism and his translation of the Bible led to many more missionaries going to India. And the Indian Christian community today is because of this man. He served God faithfully, but he didn't see much success in his life. The modern idea of sending off missionaries is because of this man. But when he went through and his wife died, he lost all his papers, everything went wrong. You know what? He kept going. The next guy was David Livingston. He's around in the 1800s. He was a Scottish missionary, an explorer. And David Livingston dedicated himself to missionary work in Africa with a vision to end the slave trade and to share the gospel. And although he encountered countless hardships and struggles along the way to make immediate headway, his explorations, discoveries, and advocacy efforts paved the way for missionary work across Africa and for the culture of slavery to change. After his death, many more people were inspired to go to Africa. This guy had resilient hope. There's another guy, I'd never heard of him before until I did this research, called Adronim. I wish these names were simple. I'm calling him A.D. A.D. Judson, an American Baptist missionary. You know, Juds Judson faced immense pressure, challenges as he went out to Burma, present-day Myanmar, including the imprisonment and the loss of loved ones. Yet he persevered in translating the Bible into Burmese and to sharing the gospel. During his lifetime, he only saw a few converts, but after his death, the seeds he planted flourished. And today, there is a thriving Christian community in Myanmar because of his influence. Sometimes we've got to have that perseverant hope, don't we? To persevere even when we don't feel like persevering. To keep going even when we don't feel like keep going. Even when things don't go our way, we've got to persevere through. You know, Jesus says this, in Matthew 16, he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross. For whoever wants to, um, to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good is it to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or anyone to give, um, anyone give an exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels and he will reward each person according to what they've done. We're all forgiven. We're all going to get into heaven. Don't worry about that, okay? If you, if you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and you turn to him. But there's also rewards for those who keep going, who keep persevering even when it gets tough, who put God first. And I don't know about you, but I kind of like rewards. My wife keeps complaining that all my medals from running are just participation medals. But... <sighs> What does she know? Okay. 
But I love a prize. Does anyone else like a prize? <laughs> Nothing beats a prize. But actually, I want to keep going. Because I want my prize is going to be well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. That's what drives me on. The only way we can do this in our lives, because life is going to be hard at times. It's going to really bite us at times. We're going to want to give up at times. Our faith is going to be challenging at times. It's going to be tough. But the thing we need is a persevering hope, a resilient hope that goes through every, keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. There's a times in my life where I've had to sacrifice my personal ambition. Naomi will tell you. At times I've cried about sacrificing my personal ambition. But the reason I do it is because I want to follow what Jesus wants in my life and not what I want. There's been times that I've wanted to give up. And there's times I've come back and said to Naomi, I'm not doing this again. Sure, none of you ever speak like that at home, okay? (laughs) There's times that God just restores my hope. He pushes me through. And he says, Jim, I've called you for something greater. You're called to something greater. I want my children to live for something greater. I want us as a church to live for something greater. And all of us are called to different things. We're not all called to the same things. We're not all called to the same ministries. But the only way we're all going to reach our potential in Christ is if we have a resilient hope that pushes through. My daughter keeps having a go at me because on my phone, she, she does all this weird stuff to the phone and computers and personalizes it and everything else. And I don't. I just have the settings that were there when I started. But the other day, she goes, Dad, you finally changed it. That's like six years of having this sort of phone, and you finally changed your background. I said, yeah. And the thing I've changed my background to is this. It's a verse that jumped out to me about four or four weeks ago. And it's something I've just been meditating on over and over again. But this is Paul writing, as it was speaking. But I do not account my life for ever any value, nor is it precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I've received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel and grace of God. I've never noticed that verse before. I've read it countless times. I've read the Bible countless times. I've read the book of Acts countless times. Never noticed that verse properly till about four weeks ago. It jumped out to me. That's been my prayer. But I do not account my life of any value, nor is precious to myself, if only I may finish the course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel and grace of God. That's my prayer. The only way I'm going to be able to do that is by having a resilient hope in the Lord. Hope that he's working through my life even when I don't see it. Hope that keeps going even when I want to stop. Hope that says, Jim, do not give up. Jim, when you're feeling fed up, do not give up. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And I want to say to some of you today, keep going. Say to the person next to you, keep going. Keep going. When you feel fed up and things aren't going your way, you know what? God is still working. You sing it in church. Sometimes we don't put it into practice in our lives. I believe that if we do have a resilient hope, each of us, if we encourage each other to be resilient, I believe God is going to do more in our lives than we could ever have imagined. I believe every Sunday we'll just be like, like, sorry, you can't share your testimony. You can't, there's too many. Because of what God's doing. And it's going to transform this community. We really believe this. But we need to pray this prayer. And I believe Hosea prayed a similar prayer. But I do not account my life of any value, nor is precious to myself, if only I may finish the course and the ministry that I've received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of grace, of the grace of God. Can we stand together? Can we invite Naomi up for the drums as well? We're going to worship God and we're going to pray now. I'm just going to leave this verse on for a moment on the screen. And I want us to pray. Can we pray this together? But I only want you to pray this if you can actually 
say it out in your hearts, and you really mean it today. To say, but I do not take account of any value, nor is pr anything precious to myself, if only I may finish the course and the ministry that I've received from the Lord Jesus. So if you want to pray this prayer with me, can we pray it together now? And if that's you today, may you put your hands out in front of you and say, Lord, this is my prayer. Let's pray. But I do not account my life of any value, nor is it precious to myself. If only I may finish the course and the ministry that I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. Maybe just for a moment, just ask God. Maybe what do I need to do? Maybe there could be something in your life you're ready to give up this morning and God said no. Keep going. Maybe for some of you just need to be reminded that God is still working in your life. Even though it feels really hard right now. Oh, to Jesus I surrender, oh, to Him I freely give, I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender. Let's see. 
all to you today, Lord. Father God, help us to have that resilient hope that even when things get hard, Lord, to follow through in what you've called us to do. Lord, we pray that you give us the strength and the power to do this, Lord. We pray, Father God, you give us the sustenance that we need, Lord, to keep going. Lord, our prayer today is this, that we will follow you everywhere that you call us, whatever you've called us to do. We pray that in your precious name. Amen. 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 It's good to have met with God this morning, isn't it? Yeah. So encourage us this week, just a reminder, we've got our um, sort of soup in a roll, I think it is, on Tuesday um, for instead of luncheon club, that's at 12.30 and a mini friendly half hour, hour okay, reflection at 1.30. So if you become at 2 o'clock, you're too late. That's going to be this week. And the Friday cafe is open as well, 10 o'clock this week. So get along to one of those. Have a great week, guys.